If you're looking at the stats of any Godzilla kaiju, you're likely to find a ton of videos about Godzilla, Ghidorah, Destroya, and etc. All the hard hitters. But what about the one that most fans regard as the weakest, Anguirus? In this video, I'm going to be analyzing the power of Godzilla's first foe and ranking each incarnation from weakest to strongest. Before we get into how strong Anguirus is, we should first answer the question of how many versions of Anguirus are there? To answer that question, there's a surprisingly few amount of Anguirus incarnations for how popular this monster is, especially compared to other staples of the franchise such as Mothra. In the Showa era, we actually get two separate Anguirus individuals, similar to how we get two separate Godzillas. The first one dies in his premiere film, much like the first Godzilla did himself. Whereas the second one sticks around until Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the second to last Godzilla film in the Showa era. After that, Anguirus is not seen until the very end of the Millennium era, where he is just one of the many, many monsters Godzilla faces on his rampage against the Exilian controlled kaiju. After that, we get one more version in the anime, Godzilla Singular Point. Adding them all up, that is only about four incarnations, and only three of those are live action. With that out of the way, let's rank some Anguirus. Also, tell me what you think the plural of Anguirus should be in the comments down below. First off, right off the bat, we have Singular Point Anguirus as the weakest incarnation by far. He's not only the smallest incarnation by far, only having ever reached a maximum height of 20 meters, but also gets killed by a harpoon. A harpoon. This incarnation didn't even have the dignity of fighting Godzilla. I will say though that after having done my research on Gojipedia, this one does appear to have the most interesting ability of them all in the form of its precognition shield, which is both the ability to see into the future and tell when it's going to be attacked, and preemptively shield itself from said attack. It also has, in my opinion, the best design. In general, the lore and design of these singular point kaiju, especially Godzilla, is quite incredibly done. It's just a shame they keep it hidden away in that cesspool called Netflix. But quickly moving on from my little rant before this becomes a different kind of video entirely, let's look at some other incarnations of Anguirus. At third place, as the second weakest incarnation, is Anguirus from Godzilla Raids again. I was tempted to put this Anguirus version higher on the list because he fought for a substantial amount of time against the second generation Showa Godzilla. But we have to keep it in perspective that this is the second generation Showa Godzilla before becoming as powerful as he ended up being by the end of the Showa era, which is a considerable amount. It's kind of like how Godzilla from Godzilla 2014 cannot be compared to Godzilla in Godzilla X Kong because he's clearly evolved. Well, Godzilla in the Showa era evolves too, gaining more battle experience as he moves on to fight foes like Kong, Mothra, and etc., while gaining new powers and abilities, like the ability to fly. This Anguirus has the least battle experience out of any of them, only presumably having some battle experience against other members of the Gojira race and similar dinosaur creatures in the prehistoric era. It's also telling he dies in his first showing. Next at second place is Anguirus from Final Wars. This version of Anguirus stands 30 meters taller than the one from Godzilla Raids again and his later Showa successor, at 90 meters tall. This Anguirus is remarkably fast and agile, able to dodge maser fire, believe it or not, this means that Anguirus is faster than the speed of light, because real life maser technology relies on electromagnetic radiation, which is defined by Britannica as the flow of energy at the universal speed of light, along with a few other characteristics. Now if you really wanted to, you could argue that masers in Toho Cinema might not work the same way as masers in real life, because among other differences, they're spelled differently. But I think that this is just such a nitpick that I'm just going to say that Mazers and Toho Cinema work the same way as they do in real life. And Gears is also fast enough to hit the airborne battleship Karyu, not to be confused with the Mecha Godzilla Kiryu. He also fought against the Final Wars Godzilla, but his showing in this battle is so humiliating for him that it really doesn't count for anything. Last and strongest of them all is the second generation Showa and Gears. This Anguirus actually has the impressive feat of having fought against King Ghidorah, a known planet destroyer. 
Very impressive considering that Ghidorah could wipe out entire planets and served as the weapon of invasion for many alien races, including Exilians and Keylocks, which would mean that he most likely had experience against other space monsters too. More impressive than the fact he fought Ghidorah alongside Godzilla is the feats of strength he showed against Ghidorah, particularly when he bit down in his neck and didn't even let go even as he was being lifted high into the air. This would likely mean, in my opinion, that he was biting down with a pressure that would equal more than his own mass, which is a considerable 30,000 metric tons. He was also dropped from a considerable height by Ghidorah, which I estimated to be either around 120 or 160 meters, 393 feet or 524 feet, without suffering any considerable damage. Oh, and because Godzilla vs. Skygan uses stock footage from the same Angiris fight in Destroy All Monsters, it proves that he can do this and take the same fall damage on a regular basis and keep fighting. He also fought, with Godzilla's help, against the deadly tag team of Ghidorah and Gigan, withstanding sharp and bloody cuts from Gigan's buzzsaw right in the eye, and entering the fray only a few moments later, and even landing some good blows to Ghidorah with his spiky shell, showing that he can, unlike his Showa-era predecessor, use his shell as a weapon, similar in practice to Final Wars and Gears. In Godzilla vs. Megalon, Angiris was buried alive by a fissure which opened up on Monster Island because of underground atomic bomb testing in the Aleutians, and he survived, further adding to an estimate of his durability. His last fight was against Mechagodzilla, who was still disguised as Godzilla, and while this fight ends in a brutal failure, the fact that he was able to stand up to him for as long as he did, a solid two minutes, still speaks of his tenacity and endurance especially when put into perspective that even Godzilla needed help against this foe. This fight against Mechagodzilla was still much more impressive than Final Wars and Gears' showing against Final Wars Godzilla, especially considering that it's generally agreed that Showa-era Godzilla is stronger than Final Wars, and Mechagodzilla can potentially scale above even that. Now that we've answered who the most powerful in Gears is, let's scale him to some other kaiju. Before I get into the scaling, I would like to mention that Angiris' shell provides insane amounts of protection from Godzilla's various attacks, gravity beams, and even Gigan's hooks, which were able to make Godzilla bleed. The only reason I didn't bring this up before is because it wasn't really relevant in scaling the incarnations of Angiris, as I believe that all incarnations of Angiris are provided with roughly the same amount of protection from their shells. Nevertheless, it is Angiris' greatest strength. In the Showa era, he could undoubtedly defeat his predecessor of the same species. In my opinion, with his intensely powerful bite force, his utility of his spiky shell, and his speed, he could probably defeat Showa era Kong in Kong's base form, who fought a much weaker Godzilla than he would eventually become, and only won because of a power amp from some lucky lightning. Baragon, the various Frankenstein monsters, yes that's a thing. Gorosaurus, Varen, Abira, and Mothra, who I think would prove especially fragile against Angiris' spiky shell. And considering he can throw himself at enemies from quite a distance, Mothra's flight wouldn't render her necessarily out of range of Angiris' attack. She would probably try to use her deadly scale attack on him, but I think his shell would provide him with the necessary protection, and she would die shortly after using her final life-ending attack. I think that, when it comes to Angiris vs Rodan, it would likely come to a stalemate just because of Rodan's overwhelming speed, but I don't think that Rodan could do any significant damage to Angiris, even if he tried to lift him up and drop him, as that didn't really work when Ghidorah tried it, so it wouldn't work here. Basically, I think that Showa-era Angiris could take on the whole lower echelon Showa-era, and I would even say that he is king of the lower echelon kaiju, as Godzilla is king of the upper echelon kaiju. And Mothra, the weakest of the upper echelon kaiju, and he could even perhaps take on Gigan, and by extension Megalon, single-handedly as he did pretty well against him in Godzilla vs. Gigan. But Angiris would undoubtedly come up short against Godzilla, Ghidorah himself, Mechagodzilla, and maybe Ghidorah, to name a few. Well, what do you think? Do you agree with my ranking of Angiris in the Showa era and its various incarnations, or do you think I went wrong? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, a massive shout out to Rocky Sage for suggesting this video. If you're watching this, thank you very much and please stick around for more Godzilla awesomeness in the future. Until then, this has been JPZilla.